SpaceX has shown the world it is ready to send Starship into orbit by fully stacking the craft ahead of launch. However, the company must now wait for approval from the FAA after already having made several improvements to their facilities. Let's take a look at the final preparations SpaceX is making ahead of Starship's second test flight and what is left for the company to gain approval from the FAA. Starship is gearing up for its second integrated flight test, and there's a lot of excitement in the air. Booster 9 has passed its pre-flight tests with flying colors and is eagerly awaiting the first stage to join it for the upcoming second launch. As for Ship 25, which went through testing a few months back, it has already achieved some significant milestones. The only remaining tasks on the checklist are completing the full stack testing and securing the essential regulatory approval required for the second flight. Following an initial static fire on August 6th that didn't go as planned, SpaceX encountered a minor setback. However, this setback didn't deter their progress. On August 25th, they conducted a second static fire test to address the issues faced during the first attempt. During the initial test, unexpectedly, four engines stopped functioning prematurely, resulting in the static fire lasting only 2.74 seconds instead of the intended nearly five seconds. In response to this challenge, SpaceX promptly removed the booster from the orbital launch mount and transported it back to the production site. What followed was the installation of a crucial component known as the hot staging ring, standing at a height of six feet. This ring plays a pivotal role in facilitating the hot staging process of the upper stage. It is specially designed with openings that allow the exhaust from the six engines beneath the ship to be released while the ship remains connected to the booster. Having securely installed this hot staging ring, the booster took the spotlight once again, this time sporting added engine protection for safe transportation. This protective barrier was implemented to shield the engines from any potential harm during the journey. Boca Chica had previously witnessed engine damage during transport, but this new setup aims to eliminate such occurrences. Subsequently, the booster successfully executed its second static fire on August 25th, representing a substantial improvement compared to the initial attempt. SpaceX proudly announced that all 33 engines of the booster roared to life, marking a significant milestone. In previous static fire tests of the Super Heavy, not all engines had ignited as intended. However, this time around, only two engines shut down shortly after ignition, while the remaining 31 powered through the full five-second duration. The introduction of the new deluge system and deflector plate had a noticeable impact on taming the force of the test. Upon closer examination, it becomes evident that the flames and thrust exhibited a more subdued nature when compared to Booster 7's static fire. With the exception of some minor damage to nearby structures, such as a fence, the overall area sustained relatively minimal harm following the test. Subsequent to this particular test, Booster 9 underwent a series of assessments, including high engine static fires, two spin primes, and three cryogenic proof tests. It's worth highlighting that this represents a significantly reduced number of tests compared to the extensive battery of over 20 tests carried out on Booster 7. This underscores SpaceX's proficiency in efficiently streamlining the validation process for these vehicles. At present, the booster is steadily advancing towards the conclusion of its single-stage test campaign. 
This progress is of utmost importance as it sets the stage for the integration of Ship 25 atop the booster. Speaking of Ship 25, it has been patiently awaiting its turn at the Rocket Garden since it was moved back in readiness for the Booster 9 static fire test. As for the upper stage, its initial and sole static fire involving all six Raptor engines took place on June 26th. Following that milestone, much of the recent efforts have been centered around the Thermal Protection Systems, or TPS. While the majority of the TPS work had been completed prior to the static fire campaign, the ship still had crane lifting points. However, as these points are no longer necessary, SpaceX has been in the process of removing them. The spaces where the crane lifting points were once located are currently undergoing the installation of TPS tiles. This action is taken to ensure that the ship can effectively withstand the heat generated during re-entry into Earth's atmosphere. In a branding maneuver reminiscent of Ship 24, SpaceX has also affixed its company logo to Ship 25. There's the possibility that a serial number print could also be included if SpaceX decides to maintain a similar branding approach. As we approach the final stages of preparation for its launch, there are several potential options being considered, though nothing has been finalized. One potential course of action under consideration is the execution of a wet dress rehearsal. This rehearsal serves the purpose of thoroughly validating the ground infrastructure, countdown software, and overall readiness of both the ship and the booster. During the wet dress rehearsal, the vehicle would undergo a simulated launch sequence, progressing all the way to T minus 10 seconds, mirroring the process used with Booster 7 and Ship 24. However, it's important to note that the launch sequence would intentionally be halted at this point. Carrying out this procedure would necessitate stringent safety measures, including the safe evacuation of methane loads and the establishment of detailed evacuation plans for Boca Chica Village. Additionally, a flight-like exclusion zone around the launch site would be implemented as part of the safety precautions. Alternatively, SpaceX has the option of proceeding with a cryogenic test for the entire stack. This test aims to validate the structural integrity of the stack after incorporating all the adjustments and modifications made since the last tanking. The ultimate decision on whether SpaceX will opt for one, both, or neither of these tests will depend on their internal needs and requirements. Currently, SpaceX has not disclosed its final decision, and it will be intriguing to see which path the company chooses. In terms of hardware readiness, Booster 9 has been meticulously prepared and stands ready for launch. However, there's a caveat. There are still unresolved regulatory matters that require attention and resolution. The Federal Aviation Administration, known as the FAA, has already issued SpaceX a list of required changes that must be implemented to secure a launch license. Once these modifications receive approval, the FAA can proceed with its final evaluation to determine the safety of permitting Starship to conduct additional flights. However, the challenge lies in the fact that neither SpaceX nor the FAA has divulged a definitive timeline for the conclusion of this process. Thus, it remains a waiting game, and it's uncertain whether the regulatory timeline will align seamlessly with SpaceX's hardware readiness for the second flight. SpaceX has commenced discussions with Mariner safety boards regarding the possibility 
of a Starship flight occurring on September 8th. It's important to note that this date doesn't necessarily coincide with the FAA report. Instead, it seems to be more of a provisional target that SpaceX is currently optimistic about. Considering the intricacies of flight restrictions and the necessity to notify the local community, there are still some aspects of the plan that require clarification. SpaceX, naturally, intends to provide ample advance notice to the residents of Boca Chica in preparation for a potential flight, ensuring a well-organized and secure evacuation process leading up to the significant day. As launch approval remains uncertain, SpaceX has made the decision to disassemble the Starship for the time being. Without any scheduled road closures, Ship 25 can stay alongside the booster to be restacked at a later date once a confirmed launch approval target is in place. SpaceX has worked diligently and made numerous improvements to its launch infrastructure and the Starship itself since the first test flight, so it is only a matter of time until we see the craft soar through the skies once more. Do you think the FAA will find SpaceX's effort sufficient, or does the company still need to make further upgrades to the rocket? Please share your thoughts in the comment section below. And if you liked this video, you may also enjoy this one, which talks about what the FAA declared about the Starship's second test flight.